So you just got your hex S from Microtik. This is the one that I actually prefer. This is the one that I use. For most of us, 99.999% of us out there, this router is going to do everything that we want it to do and then some. For others that have faster than 700 megabit internet connections, this router is not going to get you your full speed over the internet. This router is only about 700 megabits of throughput through the WAN interface before you start to hit your CPU. I have tried that. I do have gigabit internet and I can verify that. If you have gigabit internet and you want to make sure you get the full gigabit internet, do not want to buy this. This is about $68 on Amazon, nine, uh, September 20th, 2020. I've bought several of these and for places that just pay for 400, gig, uh, 400 meg internet or 100 meg internet. This works just perfectly. But just, just understand that if you get the gigabit internet with this router, you're going to get all the enterprise features you're going to get absolute 100 percent control of every feature of this of this device but it is only going to go about 700 megabits per second once you turn on the nat and start having to process and route packets uh, if you use it as just a regular switch and in fact um, the other ports that are not WAN and they're just switching packets it goes full gigabit speed all day every day all at the same time the only issue you'll see is when you try to do a speed test to speedtest.net or test my net, uh, you'll, you will only see about 700 megs. Um, if you do do that speed test, you can go and look under the CPU and you will see that you have gigabit internet. You can go to the CPU usage in this, in this thing while you're doing that speed test. You will see that it's a dual core 800 megahertz processor, uh, dual core hyper threaded packed. Alright, so let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is go to Microtik's website. Microtik.com is their website. You're going to want to go to software. You're going to want Winbox. I use 64-bit. Most people in the world these days are using 64-bit processors and operating systems. But if for some reason you're still using a 32-bit, you can use this one here. You just click this and you download this. Understand, this is a executable file. You download this, it's going to save wherever you say that you're going to save it. If you save it to your downloads file, that's where it will be. This is not an install program. This is the program. So once you double click this after you download it, it's not going to open up an installer. It's not going to put shortcuts anywhere. It's going to open the program. So remember where you've installed this to because you're going to be going to try to find this all the time. I put mine on my desktop. Once you do have this file on your desktop, <coughs> you double click it. It's going to go out there and find all of the Microtik devices that are on, its, on the network. This one by default <coughs> ships from the factory with this IP address. By default from the factory, it comes with that configuration already installed. So you're going to just click this. By default, the username, <coughs> the default username is admin, and the password is blank. This one has a password in it. And we're going to hit connect, and we're in. When you first get this, it's going to have a little thing right here that's going to say, "Do you want to, do you want to accept the default configuration?" Just click OK. This is going to get you up and running. This is this understand that this setup here is for people who have never done this before, who maybe don't know how to do this, <clears throat> maybe don't understand how to do this. More in depth videos will come. The very first thing that you want to do when you get one of these routers, any router, is set a password. You do not ever want blank passwords. This device will be connected directly to the internet, and you do not want the password blank. 
So how do you set a password in here is you go to system, then you go to users, double click the admin, it'll open this up. Hit password and type in a password. Make sure that you remember this password and make sure that it's not something like 123 or guest or router or something like that. People will try to be getting into this router. They will be scanning you. Make sure that this password is strong and make sure that you remember it. Again, this will be connected directly to the internet. Click OK, click OK, and the password is set. If all you are, want is for this to work and route traffic for you, you're done. Do not need anything more than this. You are not even beginning to scratch the capabilities of this device. But if this is what you want, that's the end of it. If you're somebody else that wants to do more and you want to mess with the settings, the easiest way to change things in this is with the quick set button. This here is the absolute minimum things that have to be set up for this thing to work. Things you can change. If your ISP gives you a static IP address, you can put that here. DSL connections, you have to put in a username and a password. And that's what and that's what the PPOE section is for. Maybe it's a DSL connection that you have to do that for. It all depends on your situation. If you don't know and you sit here to automatic, most consumer ISPs are going to do DHCP from the cable modem or some device on their network. And that is completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Right here is your local network addresses, right? So this is the address to this specific node, the router's node. A node is any tr anything on a network that is capable of layer 3 traffic. And we'll get into that more deeper if you don't understand that later on. For lack of a better way to explain it, the phone number to get to this router. If you decide that you don't want to have the default LAN IPs, you can change this address. So we want to change this. So we just pick our favorite number, say it's 68. We put that there. That changes the phone number to this specific node on our network. We also want to make sure that our DHCP server gets updated. So we're going to do this. Now, if you connected to this and you have an IP address up here rather than this MAC address, you're going to be disconnected. Why? Because the, the computer that you're on has already gotten an IP address within this range. And since we changed this, we're going to be changing our network segment that we're on. And once we do that, we'll be disconnected. Don't worry, I will show you how to reconnect. No big deal. And you can, there's ways to make your computer get a new IP address from the DHCP server or you can just reboot your computer depending on how technical you are but you will need if you want to connect on layer 3 with an IP address you're gonna to have to restart your computer or somehow make it get a new IP address so we set this we change this and we apply it now it's applied you'll notice that our DHCP server range has changed and updated itself um, if you had connected by IP. We can close that out and I will show you how to connect. You open this back up. It goes out there. It finds the new number. But if your computer's IP address and this IP address are not matching, you cannot connect to this IP address. It just sits there. It'll time out. I'm not going to wait that long. But if, with the beauty of this win box is that you can connect on layer 2. With the MAC address. I don't always recommend that, but you can do it. Connect, and we're back in. At this point, <coughs> you're done. Um, you've changed this, got your internet connection working. All this is done. We don't worry about VPN access. This here, you can change this if you want to. I changed mine. You can type in here whatever you want. And 
that's it. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Have a good day.